Today, we are planting the poorest poor man's food plot. It's awesome, it works, it's cheap, which is the best. So check this out. Uh, first thing we should do before doing any overseeding in food plots, if you got a camera on it, let's, uh, let's just shut that off so that we don't waste battery and fill up the card. And now let's get to it. Okay, so the first thing I wanna talk about is this was done last year. This, what you can see behind me, it's only about an eighth of an acre. It's long, legated, right along the ex next to this, this clover, or excuse me, not a clover field. This is a big grass hay field. There's not much actual food source for them in this grass field. Um, the two years I've been hunting this property, barely ever seen a deer out there. But I put this in last year, and this is how I did it. Real simple steps. I think there's like four steps. I came in, now weed whacked down this grass, which was all about hip high. I then waited about a week and a half, hoping to get some regeneration from the weeds to come flush back up. I came back in that week and a half and I sprayed it one time with Roundup. And then uh, I let that Roundup dry for about five minutes and I seeded right on top of it. I left all the grass that I had weed whacked and all that kind of jazz in place. Really the only labor that was intensive was weed whacking it down with a weed whacker. You can use a stick or a scythe or whatever you want. But I left all that grass in place over top of the soil. I then sprayed it and then I seeded it. And it, that's the three steps I used. I did use a little bit of fertilizer. Uh, I never did get a soil sample test, shame on me. But this well, used to be farmed 10 years ago, I think it was. So I knew the pH had to be at least a little close and it's river bottom flat, so that was good to go. So if your fourth step should be, let me restate, let me rephrase that. Your first step in any food plot should be to get a soil sample test. And then you weed whack, and then you spray, and then you seed. That should be the way you do it because then with that soil sample test, you're gonna know what the soil needs to be able to grow the best food plot and the more best palatable food plot. All that aside, I didn't do that right. But I still got a good catch. I ended up throwing out some triple 19 fertilizer and some Pell Lime just to bring that pH up a little bit more. And I seeded it in and this year, as you can see, it came back excellent with clover uh, and a little bit of chicory that caught. And the clover and chicory are probably my favorite things to plant for a food plot because it lasts for more than one year. So you're looking at generally a three to five year lifespan of clover chicory, if not longer if you don't mow it in between in the summers because it'll reseed itself. Also, with clover and chicory, it's designed for, it's designed, it's ideal for deer for the earlier seasons. So October, roughly up until about the first frost, and then they'll still nip on it. I have seen deer eat it in the winter time, so don't say, don't think that it's not gonna last or attract deer in the winter time. It just loses its attraction um, for other food plot sources like what we're doing today. And that's the cool thing about this clover chicory. You can overseed a later food plot source into an early food plot source like we're doing today. And it's pretty simple, all I'm planting is rapeseed and radishes. Radishes, for some reason, I've fallen in love with them. Um, the first year I ever planted a radish seed, I thought it was gonna be late season. And it did, but they hammered the tops of these groundhog radishes early in the season. It was youth hunt up here in Michigan and their deer were just hammering it. All through the middle of October, they actually ended up wiping out the field, left the tubulars, so they did hit it later in the year, but I mean, they, they just destroyed it. And the rape I like for late season after the frost, if I would have thought about it, I probably would have got some different turnips, like some uh, purple top turnips, just to overseed into this for the later season, but I'm not too concerned about it. I just wanted to give this a little bit more because this year it's been mowed once. There's still a little grass that came back and I'm not too concerned about it. I don't care if there's some weeds in my food plot as long as it's predominantly food for the deer. So, and it's probably 70% clover chicory with that 30% weeds, and I'm fine with that. Maybe next year if it continues to get weeds to choke out the clover chicory, I'll spray a grass specific herbicide. But if I don't have to spray anything, I'm not gonna. That portion of the overseeding is actually pretty easy too. It's the same method for what I did last year and what I did now. 
last year with the weed whacking and the spraying and then seeding is very similar to just overseeding a standing crop. What's gonna happen here is I just overseeded and the, the owner of the property said that he would mow this one more time for me, which I don't want him to mow it very low, maybe just take a couple inches off the top for the grass that's growing. And I'll still use that same layer that he mowed to cover the seed, hold that moisture in the ground, help that seed germinate. And I should have, you know, some, some uh, radishes and some rape coming up in the next few days. And then in a couple weeks, I'll come back one more time, first to trim this tree stand out here behind me and to pull a trail camera card and I will give it a little boost of energy with some more nitrogen fertilizer to help those tubulars and brassicas and all that whatever that type of food plot needs a boost of nitrogen so I'll come back and give it just a little bit of nitrogen even though there's clover already providing some nitrogen for them I'll just give them that little bit extra so hopefully it comes in really nice and thick so so we can also cover location if you want to cover location of a food plot. If you have the availability to put it in the prime spot, do it. And what I'm calling a prime spot is, in my opinion, in between two sources of, of bedding. And with this woods, this property, where we're standing right now in this long strip, it goes back behind the camera as well. It's almost like a ditch row. But on that side of it, there's a big bedding area. And of course, right back in here is a big bedding area. So I like to put it in between two bedding spots because you're gonna have does coming from the bedding spots, going to other bedding spots. This will slow them down through here to get a quick graze of food. And you're also gonna have those bucks once it starts getting to be rut time and they start sniffing around, that they're gonna wanna be checking these sources in between them checking beds. To make it easy, if you know where deer are bedding on your surrounding property or blah, 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 put it in between multiple bedding locations. There's no, there's no one way to do a food plot and there's no one way where to put a food plot. Uh, you, gotta figure, you gotta figure out what works for your situation. So you need to try. The amount of money I've had into this eighth of an acre food plot from last year till now, not including time spent on the project, is $120. $120 for a food plot. That's including the seed that I just overseeded. That's including all the seed that I seeded last year. I had to seed it twice because it went through a major, major dry spell after it germinated and a lot of it died off, so I overseeded it. So really, uh, if it was a perfect world and you get the rain, you get everything weed whacked and sprayed, you're looking at under a $100 food plot for an eighth of an acre. And it's probably, it's probably a little bit bigger than an eighth of an acre. Don't let the price or the idea thinking that you need big machinery for food plots, don't let any of that negate the possibility of you having an awesome food plot. Do you, if you don't want to plant one, then don't plant one. That's perfectly fine too. But if you have the idea to plant one and are just nervous about doing it, just do it. Experiment with it, try it. Nothing bad's gonna come of just trying something new. You just might be out of 50, 60 bucks. And we spend more than that in tags. So, hey, you know, teach their own. But give her a try, you know? So we covered the simplest way to plant a food plot, the poorest of poor man food plots, which is my favorite. Uh, we've talked about overseeding food plots, which is one and the same with how you actually start this poorest of poor man's food plots. And we talked a quick little stint about at least the location of this food plot and why I like it. Um, if you would like to know future video, in the future videos of how, like if you wanna see how I actually did this, go ahead and hit subscribe comment down below saying you'd like to see that and uh, I'll do a whole brand new food plot start to end um, probably next spring because we're getting towards the end of things and we're going to Colorado here in two weeks in 13 days actually 13 days we're going to Colorado so I'm pinched for time to make another new food plot next year but if you want to see how I did this straight up the gate instead of just talking about it the whole time comment down below you'd like to see it subscribe to this channel we're gonna keep trying to bring you great stuff uh, with your help. So, yeah. Until next time, I'll catch you guys all on the flip side. And thanks for watching.